Canada is going to look different in 30 years. You won't recognize it in 30 years compared to now. This is two times faster. A look at environment and climate change Canada's first comprehensive climate report. This is about us here in this country. It's solid, it's sound, it's, it's alarming, uh, but there are also solutions too. The Great Lakes Basin is home to 30 million people and 84% of North America's surface fresh water. We're on the shores of Lake Ontario and you know, the Great Lakes are so important to so many Canadians. We have all of the resources, the fishing, and then the, the how we use the, the recreation, the navigation, the power production. And all of these are being impacted by the fact that the climate has changed, either through warmer temperatures just on the land or through the, the Great Lakes themselves uh, changing. Toronto Public Health has confirmed that there is the presence of blue-green algae blooms in the water and should be avoided at all costs due to the potential health risks. Some of the changes are even more accentuated here in the Great Lakes than there are elsewhere in the, in the continent. The algae bloom, we couldn't drink water in some communities in, in the Great Lakes, uh, and the fish were going from uh, cold water species desirable to warm water uh, species. I think that was hit home to a lot of people that, gee, you know, our, the water we take for granted in the largest freshwater reservoir in the world is, uh, is being impacted by, by climate change. The effects are pretty clear, the glacier is melting. The measurements that we take indicate that the, off the surface of the glacier, we're losing five meters or more of ice every year. If there were for the, the snow in the mountains melting out every year, prairie rivers would run dry. What we know for sure, regardless of what we do, is that we're going to lose our glaciers. Talk about the glaciers because it's something very remote. And clearly, the, the disappearance of the of the ice and the ice caps has having a profound effect on um, on sea levels around the around the world. Nobody has yeah. seen the sea levels rise as much as they have now. Coastal communities are vulnerable. They're on the front lines of sea level rise. We're going to have more storm surge, more accelerated coastal erosion, coastal flooding. What used to be by the water is now underwater. And I think that we're seeing that in Atlantic Canada, in, in British Columbia, in the Beaufort Sea. This whole area is frozen solid. The waves are gouging underneath, and then you'll see large calving of the coast fall right off. If you think about climate change, it's often those things that you don't think will affect you do affect you. In addition to rising sea levels, as the ice continues to melt on land, the salinity of our oceans is changing. And with more CO2 absorption, the acidity of our ocean waters is increasing, causing serious impacts to marine life. The migration of entire species threatens the livelihoods of indigenous peoples and local economies dependent on fishing and tourism. Snow crab and northern shrimp prefer cooler temperatures, so we may expect to see those populations contract or decrease in abundance. When pH lowers and the ocean acidifies, shellfish have a harder time growing their shells. I was down to a conference in Prince Edward Island on from aquaculture, and those marine farmers, they know the ocean. They know that it's getting more acidic, they know it's getting warmer, they know it's getting less salty, and it's having a profound effect on their, their output. It's just a different way of life for them. They have to do things differently, scientifically look at it, and how can we, say, to either cushion the blow or take advantages of the situation. Their world is changing. It's not what their grandparents or parents did. It's what they have to do now. And whether you believe climate change represents an urgent problem or not, the impacts are transforming the global economy. Imagine you're in the oil and gas sector, you're in Estevan, Saskatchewan. You look at this and I, and, I, and I can see where you're threatened. I remember when we were talking about climate change and doing something about it decades ago, it was a job killer. Well, we've seen the opposite. We've seen if you've if accepted that, you actually create jobs and opportunities for people. And that's clearly going to be the case in the, uh, in the future. And your competition is already doing it and your consumers are insisting on it. Many of us who will be affected the most by this crisis, people like me, are not allowed to vote. The bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility. The bigger your carbon footprint, the bigger your moral duty. Solutions require cooperation between governments, industry, and citizens. The reality is every political party around the world needs a plan. It's clear that inaction is not an option. Absolutely, I think that's a really important message. We need to understand that the future Canadians don't want to look back and say, hey, they screwed up, they, they changed Canada for the, for the bad. You know, I mean, we invest this money, we make the sacrifice, 
and then we say, well, where are the results? It's tough for Canadians to make changes because the, the results are not so immediate. And I think Canadians, if they recognize that and that association that you change the climate, you change the weather, oh, that matters to me. You can't see the climate when you look out the window, but you see the weather. And if that is changing, I think it's going to hit home to Canadians that, hey, we have a responsibility to do something about it.